I've been suggesting this from day one. Now, in addition to all this, what should, of course, be done, won't be done, but it should, of course, be done, is testing, 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 tracking and isolating. But for that, you would need a massive, you would need, you need a government that was organized, or you would need to incentivize the private sector to do it in ways that we're not doing that. How would you, how would you for example, what do you think would be the mechanism by which you could get testing ramped up? How could we get instead of, I don't know, 100,000 tests a day, how do we get it up to 3 million tests a day? I wonder what the solution to that is. I mean, here's a proposal. Right now, reimbursement for tests by the government is 40 bucks, 40 bucks a test, $40 a test. So every test that a private lab or a hospital or some lab that's not the CDC does, they get $40 for it. Now, at $40, they're making a little bit of money, but not much. They can't hire new staff. It's, it's limiting. But, you know, one of the things we know about economics is that supply curves are upward sloping. What does that mean? That means that the more, the higher the price, the more the supply. That is, the higher the price we're willing to pay, the more supply will be provided. It's just economics 101. So, if suddenly there's a massive uh, demand for Porsches at a significantly higher price than what they sell for today, a bunch of people, millions of people decide they're willing to pay $200,000 for a Porsche. Guess what will happen? Many, many Porsches will be produced in order to satisfy that supply, that demand. Imagine if the government tomorrow said, given that the government is the buyer of tests, not insurance companies, it is the government, that's the mixed economy we live in. Imagine if the government said tomorrow, We're paying $200 a test, not 40, $200 a test. And we want, and we want to have $100 million, 100 million tests, 100 million tests over the next 100 days, ideally over the next 50 days, 2 million, two million tests a day, right? They have to be legit tests, they have to be real tests. But we'll pay you 200. Now, how much money is that, right? That's $20 billion, $20 billion. That's what it would cost to do $100 million, 100 million tests at, two, you can correct my math if I'm wrong, at 200 bucks a test, $20 billion. We just passed the stimulus package of 2.2 trillion that is a hundred times more than what this program would cost. Imagine, we'll spend $20 billion and we'll have a third of the American population tested. And we'll know so much about who has it, where are the hotspots, who is likely to spread it to whom, who we need to isolate. I mean, it's all over if we could get 100 million tests. All it takes is $20 billion. This administration is spending $20 billion, you know, in all kinds of directions. This would actually be fruitful. It would actually be helpful. So I'm willing to do it. I don't like government spending money, but in this case, there's nobody else. And the government is spending money anyway. And it's true that the government buying these tests will create corruption. You could create mechanism to minimize that by, by giving this money as, as grants to, you know, private hospitals and other places that buy the tests. But just think of this as an alternative to what we're doing today. We're, the government's still paying for the test. They're only paying $40. Because they're only paying $40, they're only getting a supply that is far, far less than what is needed. But pricing works. We need gloves. 
Not gloves. Masks. We need masks. Shortage of masks. What's the solution to that? Raise the price. Increase the amount you are willing to pay for those masks, and suddenly supply will show up. The same with ventilators. The same with anything. PPE. It takes a little time, but not much. Particularly not if you put a time limit on how long the offer is, is valid for. But instead of fighting the price mechanism by laws against gouging, for example, embrace economics. Embrace supply and demand. Embrace gouging. Use it to your advantage. You eliminate shortages. You increase supply of goods. You get rid of you know, hoarding. And you solve, you solve the basic economic problems and you, again, make it possible for us to open up this economy because now we have enough ventilators and enough PPE and enough masks because we're willing to pay what is necessary to generate enough of all of those. <sighs> all right, so... We covered two things. We covered the fact that we need to open up this economy and is, it, open up our lives, not the economy. And there's absolutely no reason not to do it. And uh, it's not an issue of reason not to do it. It's the fact that our rights, our freedoms, our liberty, our life demand that we do it, demand that we're free. The government has way exceeded its powers, way exceeded its responsibilities. And if that means more people will die within a certain realm. Yeah, that is true. So be it. And the blame on that will fall, as I said in the beginning, on socialized medicine, on Medicare and Medicaid, and government involvement in how many hospitals we get and everything else. Too much government involvement kills people. Too much government involvement kills people. So what we need to do is stop. And in the transition, it's going to be messy. And it's going to be deadly for some. And it's going to be unpleasant. But that unpleasantness does not justify the violating of rights of millions, tens of millions of people around the United States. So end it now. Take, take Trump's administration's plan and implement it today. And let's get on with our lives because this is... This is not a way to live. It's not a way to live, guys. Not a way to live when you have to think about going outside, whether the cops are there to stop you. It's not a way to live when you can't open your restaurant that you've invested your life's fortune into. It's not a way to live when you can't go to a restaurant who's willing to serve you. It's not a way to live when you're stuck at home, not by choice, not because it's the right thing to do for your health, but because some bureaucrat in the government has decided that you need to be stuck at home. It's not a way to live. It's not a way to live financially, and it's not a way to live psychologically. Freedom, liberty are the only ways human beings should live. And that's what we should fight for, and that's what we should live for, and that's what we should demand today, not tomorrow, today what we need today what i call the new intellectual would be any man or woman who is willing to think meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason by the intellect not by feelings wishes whims or mystic revelations any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair cynicism and impotence and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, Please take this opportunity. Go to yourunbookshow.com/support or go to subscribestar.com/yourunbookshow, 
and um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.